and we're going to start by sitting on the edge of the chair and we're going to warm up the feet and get the lymph system going up with a deep inhale in exhale and turn your palms upward and inhale up shoulders up 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 and exhale and lower the shoulders down and inhale up And exhale down. And inhale up. Turn the palms as you exhale. Inhale up. And exhale. And again, deeper inhale. Deeper exhale. And deeper inhale. And deeper exhale. Now we're going to walk with our arms, with the palms up. And as you walk, start moving the shoulders back and forth. And with it, rotate the spine around its own axis. Back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And maybe you can already feel also your hip going back and forth. And maybe you can also feel your knees going back and forth and back and forth. And the whole body is participating in you running. Where are you running? I find it like a really easy, fast way to get my energy up and bring a smile into your face, my face. <laughs> I think the prettiest part in everybody's face is when they smile. Everybody looks pr much prettier when they smile. We just have to find the smile. Keep on running, that's okay. You can run slower if you feel like your heart cannot handle it. But if you can, pretend that there is a bus there that's almost ready to leave and you want to catch it. <laughs> See if you can include your hip and your legs, not your feet, but all the rest. And maybe you can even feel the shift of weight from heel to toes. Okay, and slow down. Slow down. And slow down. And rest. And we're going to go do papam again. Yapam, papam, 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 papam. classes we dealt a lot with the shoulder area. Today we're going to go down to the legs. This is the end. Just breathe gently in. And relax it through the spine. And take, we'll start with the right foot, turn the foot to the outside and to the inside. 
into the outside and to the inside. You're going to have to lift the foot and I have to actually make a little step towards the in and towards the out to be able to really get a inversion and eversion. So this is the inversion and this is the eversion. We're turning the foot at the ankle from side to side. And notice if you put your hand on your thigh, you're going to feel the muscle of your thighs getting involved. And if you put your hand on your hip, you might feel a little bit movement of the ilium as well. Or if you put it on the ASIS, on the tip here, you may feel. The more we know, the more we're aware, the better we do it. How far do you have to move your foot in and out? How high do you have to lift your knee to actually create? And see, maybe you can do it without, maybe you can drag the foot. Again, the idea is to explore different ways and, fit and see what kind of results you get. And not just do it automatically on a default, just one way. Having options is always nice, doesn't it? Isn't it? Oop. And speaking good English is also a nice option. <laughs> it's really interesting that there are certain mistakes that are so embedded or that they come from translation from Hebrew to English that it's very difficult for me to get rid of. And many times if I hear the video a second time, I can hear my mistakes and I cringe, but it's too late, it's recorded, so. The only thing I can do is smile and say, oh well, next time. Okay, and rest the right foot. And see if you can feel the difference between the right foot and the left foot. The loveness and the lightness in the right foot versus the left that's just planted there. So we're going to try and bring the left foot to the same quality that we feel in the right foot. And again, try different variations, different distances. See if you can maybe turn the foot without moving it a big a whole step. Maybe you can turn it right underneath. Maybe you can drag it rather than lifting the knees. And again, feel how the muscles are working. See if you can sense the engagement of the rest of the leg. and rest and just let the legs rest actually maybe we're gonna do pa -pum, pa -pum, and get things moving ta -tum, ta -tum, pa -pum.
anyhow. Okay, we're gonna send the foot forward, put the heel on the floor, slowly lower the rest of the foot and try to grab something from the floor to lift it up and send the heel forward. It's best if you don't have shoes on and put the rest of the foot gently. Try to separate as much as you can. Grab with the toes as if there's a piece of paper or maybe a little piece of maybe a coin and you lift it with your toes. Think about animals that's trying to grab something, a cat, putting the paw forward and dragging it towards it so it can lift it to eat it. And maybe even do it with your hand and the foot to really get the sense of that paw going forward and the toes grabbing it, lifting it. But the idea is not to crunch the toes like this, but actually softly, like stroking and drag and lift. Not with the claws, just with the paw and send it. And reach and drag it towards you and lift and send it and put your power over it and drag it and lift. Okay, let's try the left one. We'll do it with the hand. I think it's easier. We have the neurological connection of the hand and the feet, so we can use it to our advantage. Up in the, the picture in the brain, the eumegalus, and reach and put your foot over whatever it is, maybe a little mouse, and break and lift and reach and heal and the rest of the foot and drag it and lift and reach and put it down and drag it and lift Actually, it feels nice, doesn't it? And rest it. And the next time we're going to do the same thing. Since you know the movement here, see how much you are moving back on your pelvis and how much you're rounding your back, your spine, when you're lifting the little mouse in your clock. So, reach, cover the mouse, drag it towards you, and now as you lift it towards you, are you rounding your spine? Are you moving backwards with your hip? But you're still far away from your face, aren't you? And down, and down. round and so now your whole body again is participating in reaching, dragging and lifting and reaching, 
covering the mouse, dragging it and lifting. Rounding. The, and how is your neck and your eyes level are helping in that full circular motion? And let's try and find it in the left side of the body. Is the left side working the same as the right? Reaching, covering, dragging, lifting. Is your left hip moving backwards as easily as on the right side? Is your spine responding in the same way? Reaching down. And and out and one on the left side and rest lift the spine round it with your head and your eyes lift the spine and notice how your head and your eyes are carried by your spine and your eyes are going down as your spine rounds and your eyes coming up as your spine lifts and around and up and allow your head and the eyes to respond to the movement of your spine and round and if you have areas in your spine that don't move. See if you can move them before you allow yourself to move in an area that they are more flexible. See if you can waken up a sleeping area in your spine. It might be between your shoulder blade. It might be in your lower back. It might be around your lower ribs. Where is your dead area? The area that does not want to move. Is it the whole spine maybe? I hope not. Can you feel that the pelvis and the head are moving away from one another and towards one another as you are rounding and as you are extending? Or maybe they are going towards one another from the back and towards one another in the front. Different ways of looking at it. And the extension, the head and the tail are trying to touch one another from behind and from the front the tail comes forward and your head comes forward. And rest here. And now we're going to go to the movement that we had in the very beginning where we open the arms and then we open the foot. And so we're going to reach, and as we go down, we're going to cover with the toes, but we're immediately going to turn to the outside to lift the foot, rock the pelvis, and bring the leg closer to our mouse. And the mouse to the mouth. And reach. Cover up, move to the side of the foot to drag it and lift it closer to the face. So maybe you can have lunch, just joking, and reach, 
and down into the side of the foot to lift up. Last week I took a class, a family Christ class, that the idea it was to get with the foot to wash our face. So this is kind of a take on that class. And reach last time. See if you can not create too much tension in here by really as you drag, as your foot is turned, you can also curve your spine and rest the leg. And then we're gonna go to the other side. So we are reaching. We put the toes down. We turn the foot and we bring it using the ability of the back to round, not just of the leg to lift up. Heel and toes and drag and lift and reach and you can use your hand to help you visualize and feel and get the sensory input that you need to get the movement heal and reach in the rotation to the side the dragging and the lifting and the spine now we all have different place of flexibility or inflexibility and it's all okay you just need to be aware and work with it and try to get other areas to respond and maybe come to life again and reach and down and drag and lift and eat the mouse for lunch and rest Pa-pam, pa-pam, pa-pam Drag it up, 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 up until it's up on your knees if possible. Get both hands underneath the foot and the knee. We are going to lift the leg, but the leg, lifting the leg by rounding the spine, not by lifting the leg because I can from the hip joint, but round the spine and the leg will be lifted and lower the leg and the back will come up. So it's kind of the lazy chair. This is the mechanics of it. Round the back and lower the leg and the back will come up. And again. Move the back backwards and the leg will come up. And move the leg down and the back will come to center. Now try just to lift the leg. Hard, isn't it? It works only in one joint. But here we have all the vertebras participating. And let's try the other leg. Drag the left leg up, 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 up. One hand supports from underneath the foot, the other one supports from underneath the knee. And rounding the spine. And the leg comes up. And lowering the leg. 
and the spine comes back and rounding the spine then come back and rounding the spine and coming back and exhale and round your spine When I was a kid, I was, was able to lift the leg and put it behind my head. I don't know if I can do it nowadays. <laughs> With a little bit of work. And bring it down. And both legs out both legs in. You can hold on to the chair if needed, both in and out. And in and out. If you're trying to stay underneath your own feet, how much movement do you have in your pelvis? If you allow yourself to go outside and inside, how much movement do you have in the hip? So right now, I'm on the outside of the foot when my feet are together, and I'm on the inside when my feet are out. In a minute, I will change and see what happens. Allow your spine to respond. Allow your hip to respond. And of course, breathe. Okay, now that the feet are outside, go ahead and put them outside. And when they're inside, put them in. And outside and outside and inside and inside and outside and outside. That does not feel good. But it's possible. And as we talked about possibilities, we are working with possibilities. And center. Interlace your fingers. Inhale up. Hold the breath. And relax it. And I thank you very much. And I see you next time.